Isn't that crazy? Both of those are five pounds. Now the difference between losing five pounds in fat and five pounds of muscle are massive. But when we do these belly burn challenges or when people lose weight, and then if they lose five pounds, they're like, coach, that's not enough. And I love that you're driven, but in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the difference between five pounds and what the impact that's gonna make on you long-term. So let's put this into perspective. If you lost five pounds in two weeks, you're thinking, well, coach, that's not enough. But a lot of people's goals is to lose 10 pounds. So if you lost five pounds in two weeks, that would be 10 pounds in a month. But you're thinking, I have 20 pounds to lose. But think about this. If you lost five pounds in two weeks, that would be 2.5 pounds per week. Now, if you times that by 52 weeks, so 52 times 2.5, that would be 136 pounds that you lost in a year. How crazy would that be to lose 136 pounds in a year? Now, is it possible? 100%. In fact, I've had clients lose 150 pounds and more in a matter of a year. Did it stay off? Well, that's a whole different story. That's a whole different mindset and that's a whole different commitment. But is it possible to lose that much weight? Yes. Is it for you? Probably not. And so if you think about it, that's a lot. But if you lost 0.5 pounds a week, so that would be a pound every two weeks or two pounds a month, you're thinking, coach, that's not enough. But 0.5 times 52 weeks is 26 pounds. Doesn't that sound like a nice even number? You don't have to do anything crazy. You don't gotta work out four or five times a day. You don't gotta be on a 200 calorie diet. You don't have to skip family outings or never have a drink. If you focus on just 0.5 pound weight loss per week or two pounds a month, that's gonna get you to that goal, right? That's gonna get you to where you want to be. And when it comes to muscle, you have to reverse that. So if you gained even just 1% muscle per month, which is super impossible because if you gain 12% muscle in a matter of a year, I need to know what your tricks are. And in order to get there, it takes a lot. Not to say that it's impossible, but I haven't really seen it. But if you were to put 10% of muscle on in a year and you're 150 pounds, that would be 15 pounds of muscle. That's a lot. And that requires a lot of calories. And at the beginning of this video, and I'm gonna show it again right here, Jerome, put it right here, five pounds of muscle versus five pounds of fat. So if you held five pounds of muscle in your hands, it's a very dense, very small, like it's, it's you, can, you can just hold it in your hands and it feels firm. Now, if you hold five pounds of fat, it's big, it's fluffy, it feels like a giant marshmallow. Now, you take that giant marshmallow from your total body. Now, unfortunately, you can't just take that five pounds from your stomach naturally. Like, it's gonna come off where you're most metabolically active. And so, the hack that I would tell you is that, yes, you cannot spot reduce fat loss from one specific area. But if you built up muscle in, let's say your abs, and you did your abs every single day, and your diet was on point, and you still work out your full body, the more muscle that you're gonna have in that area, the more metabolically active it is. So think about it in this perspective, and this is how I look at it. For every pound of muscle that you own on your body, it requires 30 calories a day to stay active, to stay alive, to thrive. Guess how many calories it requires for you for one pound of fat. So remember, one pound of muscle is tiny, one pound of fat is big. Guess how many calories it requires for that one pound of fat? Three. So now you think about it, oh my gosh, if I just focused on putting on more muscle, then I could eat more food. It's like, that's, that's how I love it. And so if you can focus on even just putting on three to 5% more muscle per year, that's gonna increase the amount of calories that you can eat, but it's also going to make your body more metabolically active. So as you work out and as you gain more muscle in that area, those muscles become more caloric dependent. And when you do intermittent fasting and when you do the HIIT training that we do like at the gym, then your body is going to need a fuel source. And when you're in a caloric deficit and the calories aren't being inputted and you do it properly with your belly burn coach, well, guess what? 
your body is going to need those calories in the muscle that you have. And so it's going to start to pull from your fat stores. And that's ultimately what we want to do. So the next time you lose five pounds and you're like, it's not enough, you need to put that into perspective and look at that over the course of the year. If you were to lose five to 10 pounds for the next five to 10 years, where would you be? Do that in the opposite. The average person gains anywhere from three to five pounds of weight, of body fat, every year after the age of 35. And then they kind of peak out into their 50s because in their 50s, they naturally decline in hormones, they naturally decline into their muscle mass. Like this is the people that aren't physically active. And so you'll gain, gain, gain weight until you've reached your peak. But at this point, you're, you're, you're older, your body can't sustain like the muscle and it doesn't want to put on new muscle at that age. So it's a lot harder to start later. So if you're watching this video and you're not currently with Fit Club, then what you need to do is go to www.fitclub.fit, send us a message, we'll get you started today. If you're one of our members and if you're doing these belly burn challenges, focus on the small percentage of losses. So if you put into perspective over long term, we run six belly burn challenges a year. Now, the clients that I work with, most people will lose on average about 10 to 15 pounds on the year. Now in these challenges, they might lose 10 or 15, but then they gain some back because why? The focus isn't there, the accountability isn't there, and I get it, that's okay. You can take breaks between belly burn challenges. But overall, the clients that are doing these belly burn challenges long term are if we look at where they started this time last year and we look at where they are here today, they're still well below where they started and they're still losing weight, still losing fat and still gaining muscle.